وزدنا علما واجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه آمين وبه Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the angels with this natural inclination and this natural instinct to worship Him. And Allah created animals with this natural inclination to satisfy their desires. And then you have human beings who Allah created for the purpose of worshipping Him. But then He tested them with these natural temptations, these natural desires that they want to satisfy their natural desires. And this is basically the human nafs. Its nature is that it wants to satisfy its desires. And so the month of Ramadan is an opportunity for us to suppress these desires and elevate ourselves to the level of the angels. And so in the month of Ramadan, we are fasting. And this fasting, it trains us to suppress and oppose our the desires of our nafs. And this is exactly why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed fasting for us. It's not that Allah wants us to suffer <coughs> and he wants us to go through difficulty just for the sake of it no there is always a noble objective and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not command anything except that there is benefit in it and so the benefit is clear as Allah tells us that the whole purpose behind fasting is so that we attain the taqwa of Allah. If you think about the pillars of Islam, they involve mandatory statements or actions. Okay? Do this or say this. The shahada, you have to say something. Salah, it's actions that you are required to do. Zakat, an action that you are required to do. Hajj, the same thing. Except for fasting. Fasting is the only pillar of Islam that does not require action, but rather it requires it requires refraining, staying away. And what that teaches us is that our deen is not just things that we have to do, but rather it also includes things that we have to stay away from. And so, and so fasting, it trains the believer to refrain from certain things. In this case, to refrain from things that are otherwise permissible. Our food, our drink, it's something permissible. And so we stay away from it only because Allah has commanded us to do so. Not because it's haram. Not because this food and drink is haram, but because Allah wants us to stay away from it for a certain period of time to train us. And so fasting is supposed to increase your taqwa. Meaning that two things happen. Your preservation of the obligations increases and you're staying away from the prohibitions, increases. If this does not happen, then you need to be, you need to ask yourself, you know, what are you gaining out of your fasting? 
And that's why the scholars mentioned that there are three levels of fasting. You have, first of all, the ordinary fasting, which is to stay away from food and drink and your desire. This is something that even a non-Muslim can do. But the second level is what they refer to as the special fasting, where you keep your, your eyes, your ears, your tongue, your hands, your feet, and all your other body parts free of sin. So it's not just your stomach that you're controlling, but it's also your eyes, your ears, your hands, and your all of your body parts that you are controlling. And then there's a third level that they mention, and that is the extra special kind of fast, where a person, he his heart becomes empty of everything except Allah. He doesn't have any concern in this dunya except his concerns for Allah. The point here is, the point here is that half of Ramadan has gone by and we need to ask ourselves, what have we achieved out of fasting? The Prophet wasallam says that there are people who, they get nothing from their fast except hunger and thirst. And so these people are suffering because that's all that they gain out of it. Ibn Rajab, he mentions that patience is of three kinds. Patience is of three kinds. You have patience upon the obedience of Allah. Whatever Allah has told you to do, you do it. And you're patient upon that. The second is patience in refraining from the prohibitions of Allah. Whatever Allah has made haram, you stay away from it and you're patient staying away from it. And the third is patience upon the painful calamities that Allah decrees. You're going through, you're going through some rough times in your life, financial problems, marital problems, you lose a loved one, you fall ill and you're dealing with a sickness. All of these are catastrophes and calamities that Allah inflicts upon us. We are required to be patient. He goes on to say, all these three kinds of patience, they come together in fasting. And so you're required to be patient upon the obedience of Allah when you're fasting. You're required to be patient in staying away from what Allah has made haram when you're fasting, food and drink and so on and so forth. And you are supposed to be patient over whatever happens to you, whatever suffering that comes out of fasting. Hunger, thirst, weakness of body. And so, this should remind us the day that we fast should remind us of our journey towards Allah in this life. When we fast, we are patient, right? We are conscious of Allah. We don't do certain things. We don't say certain things. And we remain patient until, until the end of the day, until Maghrib. Now, what happens when you have your iftar? How do you feel at that time? In a few minutes, when we have our iftar, what is the feeling? It's a good feeling. It's a feeling of joy. You're happy. You're happy because you made it. You feel good. You made it through this day. It may have been difficult, but you were patient. That's the key here, patience. 
And so this should remind us of our journey in this life towards meeting Allah. If you exercise patience in your life upon the obedience of Allah and staying away from His disobedience throughout your life and you're patient upon that, you remain upon this straight path towards meeting Allah. Whatever temptations come your way, you're patient. And you don't give up. You continue. You don't slack off. You don't give up. You continue until you breathe your last. When you meet Allah on that day, what state are you going to be in? You're going to feel good. You're going to feel happy. And this is exactly what the Prophet ﷺ said when he said, لِلصَّائِمِ farhatan." The fasting person, there are two times when he is happy. When he breaks his fast, and the second, when he meets his Rabb. And so look at how the Prophet ﷺ compared the day you fast to your journey in this life towards meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The lesson that we want to take from this is that fasting teaches us patience and it trains us to have the taqwa of Allah. This is something that we require throughout the year. Not just once a year, but we require it throughout the year. And we need it in our life. And so the point here is that Allah has legislated fasting for us, not to make things burdensome and difficult for us, but rather for our own good. For our own good. If we didn't have opportunities like this, like Ramadan, then where would we be today? We would be continuously living a life of negligence and heedlessness, straying away, and nothing to bring us back on the path. Ramadan is an opportunity and that's why Allah legislated what He legislated in this month. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us to be from among those who who benefit out of their fasting, benefit in terms of their iman and their taqwa and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our fasting and our salah and our qiyam and our sadaqat and our qira'ah of the Qur'an. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all of our good deeds done during this month of Ramadan. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it and to give us more opportunities like this, the month of Ramadan, in a state of iman and good health. صلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Allah Akbar